Hello, if you've been around a while, you've watched some of our how-to videos. This one is by far the most important one of all. This video is your guide to the Swipe Pages editor. Before we get started with the editor, let's look at creating a landing page. We'll start off in our dashboard under the landing pages section. Click here, add in a title, and then you can choose one of these page types. We have a video that talks about the differences as well. You'd need to choose the page based on your campaign. For a Google search ads campaign, you'd pick AMP. If you're focused on social media ads, you'd pick Mobile Slide. And if you want the best of both worlds, you'd go with Smart Page. There are about 50 different templates that you can choose from. You can filter them down through the tags right here, then preview the ones you like, pick the one that fits best, and you're good to go. For this example, we'll choose this one right here. Before we begin, let's get a lay of the land. This area right here will be referred to as the left panel. This section in between, the largest section, is called the preview area. Now, on the left panel, the first icon you'll see leads you to the layers panel. This is where you'll find the skeleton of the page. You can view and edit your sections from here. Next up, you'll have the modules panel. These are the different components that you can add to your page through simple drag and drop actions. These are essentially the building blocks of your page. And through the setting icon, you access the global setting, of course. Most everything that makes your page what it is can be changed on this panel. Your favicon, fonts and typography, analytics codes, SEO settings and more. Pushing that aside, let's get building. We've gone with a template. So much of the work is already done for us. The entire page acts in a grid style. This means that the page is divided into sections and further into rows and columns within these sections. Sections occupy the entire width of the page. Within each section, you can have multiple rows, which can be divided into columns. Your elements or modules go into these subblocks. I can add a module into this column either by clicking on the plus and choosing the right module or by dragging the module out from the left panel. And you can keep repeating the process to populate the columns with all the modules you'd like. So here we're gonna add a heading up here, put in some text right under it, and maybe an image to showcase our product. Let's not forget the most important module, a call to action. We'll put in a button right underneath the text here. Basic layout done, great. Now let's edit a module. For this, we'll click on the module we want to edit. We'll go with the heading. Now, the left panel gives you a host of edit options for the specific module. With the heading, I can choose to edit the heading size, width the content occupies, alignment, color, and so on. If you noticed, all the changes you're making on the left panel are directly reflected on the preview area, so you know exactly what you're doing. Let's look back at the preview area for a second. Whenever you click onto a module, you'll see this little blue panel above the module. This is called the observer. Through the observer, you can duplicate a module, delete a module, and you can use the eye icon right here to pull up the module within the layers panel to your left. Now that row is sorted, you can come down here to add more rows or sections. You can either choose to add a blank section or choose a section template from the 85 plus options that we have. So what if you wanna move this row up? Head to the skeleton view, choose the section you want to move and simply drag it to the position you want. Let's take a closer look at how to edit elements that are on the page. Apart from clicking into the module to make edits, you can also drag the edges to carry out what we call a live edit, which lets you edit margins. You could do the same thing on the entire section to change the section padding or column width or to resize images. Now, say we have a section like this with multiple similar columns and we've just edited the first one to perfection. We now want that style to be replicated across columns. We can simply copy the style and paste it across the columns we want, like so. Or you could multi-select all the modules and paste the style all together. Looking back to the top right corner, here we can find the various device options for you to take a look at how responsive your landing page is within various devices. Clicking on each of them shows you the layout for that particular screen type. Since we follow a grid layout, most pages are automatically responsive across screens. But in case you do want to make edits, you can go into the screen of your choice and edit the sizing for that particular layout alone. From the left panel for those settings, you have the responsive control. Your edits won't make changes to the other screen sizes. Apart from all that editing, you have your basic undo and redo buttons on the bottom left. And you have your all important save, preview and publish options on the top right. Save, 
is self-explanatory. As for the preview option, it helps you to take a look at what the page looks like in real time without having to make the page live. Well, when you click on the publish button, you are met with options to publish the page to either a swipe pages URL or a custom domain. We'll look into this in detail later. This link here is what you can use for your campaigns and testing. Once published, your optimized page is ready to roll.